Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 15th and the 22nd of December 2018. This is the place where we talk about celestial transits. Who? Me and Georgia, of course. Hello Georgia, how are you? You good? Yeah, are you enjoying yourself? Yes, you are. So that's the place where me and Georgia talk about celestial transits, things that are happening in the sky that really affect us all, all zodiac signs, and how to better prepare for this week. So what kind of week are we expecting? We are expecting the December solstice, the time that the southern pole of this earth is headed towards the sun, the sun is touching the, uh, uh, the Capricorn. Bah! The sun is touching the Tropic of Capricorn directly above it and ends its journey southward towards darkness towards the light diminishing, seems as if she is still. The sun doesn't move for three days. In the sky it stops its, its motion, its never-ending motion in this. I hope you know that the sun's journey in the sky in winter and summer has the figure of an eight, the symbol of infinity comes from this journey of the sun towards uh, and the wiggling of the earth through the seasons. So at this point, it seems like it's still, it doesn't move. But after three days, it rises up again to the north, back where the light strengthens, higher and higher in the sky as it rises to heaven. And of course, this was one of the most significant times of the year for ancient people and ancient cultures. And we can see over 20 depictions in ancient cultures of very important rituals, holidays, and gods, and messiahs, messengers of God, <clears throat> that their uh, uh, birth and their death and rising up to heaven were synchronized with this celestial event, astrological and astronomical event. And the last of this wonderful line of sages is Jesus of Nazareth. And we cannot tell for sure if this was the original time that the historical figure of Jesus was born and actually died and rose up to heaven, or was this something that was brought into Christianity in the Council of Nicaea in the first century AD, when Emperor Constantine decided to make the whole of Rome, the Roman Empire, Christian. And he was a good politician. He knew that all the pagans of Rome would never accept Christianity if it wouldn't be merged with the traditions that they already follow. So the sacred day of Christianity was moved from being the Saturday was the same as the Jews, to Sunday, the most important day for who? For the sun God. And a lot of other changes and synchronicities were introduced to Christianity in order to appease the pagans. And this wasn't something that Constantine learned for the first time on his own. It was something that was regularly done whenever 
a religion needed to step forward and take authority and needed to swallow, in a sense, the older traditions, the heterogeneical uh, traditions that were part of it before and make something that is more homogenous. So, it is an important time that traditionally was known as the cold moon in the northern hemisphere or the moon before Yule. It's the first day of winter, it's the time that the cold breeze comes in. And of course in the southern hemisphere it's the first day of summer. And this moon traditionally is the moon that calls upon us, at least in the northern hemisphere, but we're talking about nor northern hemisphere traditions right now. Astrology, Western astrology. It was considered a time that we should take up responsibility. A time that we should understand that our labor and our toils have fruited, that we have reaped what we have sown, and now, now we are faced with heaps of hay and sacks of potatoes and grains and fruit. And after all the work we've done through the last few months, if we do not step up take responsibility, organize and learn from our past experience and mistakes and take everything that we already managed to achieve and organize it in a way that it could withstand this winter, this world. It's all, there's a danger that it can all rot away. This is the point where we have failed in the past. And if we don't want our crops and our sustenance to be harmed through the winter, we need to be very organized, very responsible, and deal with shit now. Because this is where maturation this is where growing up really comes into play. Growing up is uh, uh, utilizing, utilizing your past experience to provide you with better answers and better actions in daily life that make this a more sustainable and stable and, and uh, satisfactory life for you. Of course, I'm talking about Saturn. And we're having a full moon in Cancer opposite Saturn, which is conjunct the Sun. The Sun moves into Capricorn and this solstice, again signifying the first day of winter. And so there's a lot of Saturnian energy here. Saturn is the great educator. It's the old teacher. Why is he the old teacher? Because of his past experience. He knows best. Saturn is about education. Saturn is about three sets of rules. Maurice Fernandez, my teacher for evolutionary astrology, always talks about the two sets of rules that Saturn brings. One is the set of rules we were born into when we came to this world. We live in a certain time, in a certain place, certain economic status, with certain parents, in a certain community. Some things are allowed, others are not. We have our traditions, we have our local set of laws. These laws are transient. They always change according to time and space. The laws of man. 
The other set of rules is universal law. Universal law is eternal. The truth is never changing. And it has no consequence whatsoever in which space and time you'll try to apply them. They will always be the same. But I see Saturn as providing us, the, the aim of Saturn is to provide us with a third synthesis, personal set of rules. Understanding the universal and eternal and understanding the transient and marrying them into something according to our past experience that allows us to live a fuller, richer, better life within the rules that we ourselves set to ourselves according to our experience. Because we know already where our weak spots are at. That's karma, my friends. Our weak spots are the places we need to work on the most. I always tell my clients that we've been told since the time that we were kids, it's just, at least my teacher used to tell me, Boaz, take the things that you're passionate about and that you're talented in and walk up that mountain and conquer that peak and make your dreams come true. And for a moment there, I was a very polite kid, but for a moment there, I wanted to ask her, are you serious? Are you dumb or are you lying? And of course I never did, but I, I actually felt sorry for her that day. Because I knew that life doesn't work that way. It's not a picturesque scene out of a not particularly good Walt Disney movie filled with cotton candy and saccharin. No. The ugly truth is that if you want to take the things that you're passionate about, if you want to think if you want to take the things that you love and are good at and actually make your dreams come true, you better start addressing your weaknesses. All the places you're anxious in, all the places you're small in, that you feel unapt and ill-prepared, so much that you want other people to do it for you in your life, if you take those weak spots and strengthen them. Like in the, in, the, in, in, in the ecosystem, when we see tropical cascading and things trickling down and affecting the whole system, you know, you take one thing out, you take one thing in, the whole system is affected. The same thing. These are points that if you work on, you strengthen the whole system. And why? Because if you actually try to take the things you're good at and go through that mount to that mountain top, climb to that mountain top, and put pressure on this human chain, it could break under pressure. It would never break in its strongest, more, ta more talented links, only in its weakest ones. So by not working on your weaknesses today, you are actually preparing the sticks that would go into your wheels when you are trying to make your dreams come true. Because no one is going to want to come up the rest of the way with you if you don't work on these weaknesses. Or you'll just end up making yourself fall down. So that's why Saturn, karma, learning, learning to take the places we are weak at and educate ourselves to become strong to become responsible and to become adult in so much so that we become authority figures, hegemonious figures in the places that we were once weak at. So, some things to think about uh, for this solstice and full moon. Let's go down to the weekdays. Saturday the 15th, the moon is still in Pisces, but it's conjunct Mars. It's a very passive-aggressive, too energetic time for a Saturday. Um, 
watch out for your emotions being too turbulent and being triggered by things. Saying that, it could be amazing for intimacy and sex. There's a sex style from the moon to Pluto as well. Um, but as that day draws forward, and remember I'm talking in Central European time. If you're in the States, move it about nine hours uh, before. If you're in Australia, about nine hours ahead. So <clears throat> as the day draw, draws onward, Saturday evening is really sensitive and our hello Georgia and our sensitivity could really be amplified it's a great time for healing and talking about emotional hurts and tending to emotional hurts around you but we have to be careful not to act out from our hurt place Sunday the 16th moon in Aries very energetic I mean communication could be swift it's a great day to enjoy family it's a great day for work as well if you are working on a Sunday it's a good day to take things forward of importance and it could be a lucky day especially from the evening time it's not without its challenges but there is a promise that if we you see her here that if we uh, do make an effort it could pay off uh, Monday, the 17th, Moon in Aries, uh, Mars, sextile Pluto, very energetic, could be deep actions, psychological actions, could be transformative actions. On that day, just have to watch out from our darker side and not let it play out as there is a square to Pluto on that day from the Moon. So don't be too obsessive about your ideas, open up and know when to push off to take your feet off the gas pedal tuesday the 18th everything chills down with the moon and taurus baby let's eat and drink and i'm not gonna say the f word and just enjoy life right georgia when the moon is in taurus and the moon is also trining the sun on that day and it could be and because the moon is conjunct uranus it could be a day that everything can happen. You have to be very flexible. You have to understand that plans can change and float along with it. Try new things. Let yourself embrace new ground. But don't be too rebellious without any real cause. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, Georgia. Wednesday, the 19th, moon still in Taurus. Try and... Uh, try and uh, Mr. Saturn that we've been talking about so much. Good day for work. Good day for responsibility. Good day to take uh, things that are of a strategic nature forward, get organized in your life. And there's a lot of internal power coming in through this day with the trying to Pluto as well. And a lot of inspiration, the sextile to uh, uh, Neptune. But in relationships of any kind, work relationships, personal relationships, we have to be careful not to ask for too much, not to be too demanding. We could be a little too hungry for love, attention, anything we want, satisfaction on that day. So, as Thursday the 20th is actually a very faster day than than. Then Wednesday was, it's, it's like the pace picks up with uh, the moon in Gemini and sextile Mars, we could actually enjoy the speed throughout the day. The sun is going to exactly try Uranus on that day and that is an effect that we are feeling throughout the week. Georgia, why are you talking like Albert Einstein now? Actually, he was a friend of the family. I have a, friend, I have a picture of... Uh, my great uncle standing with Einstein smoking. <sighs> Didn't they know? Uh, I inherited a lot of smoke in my family. <coughs> As a, you can hear. Anyway, so Thursday has a much faster pace and we can enjoy the speed. 
we, you know, this sun trine Uranus is something we've been feeling throughout this week, and we're still feeling it, and it's at its height on Thursday. And it's a time that calls us to innovate, to understand that if we really want to walk forward, we have to change. Some things have to go. Some things have to step up to, uh, 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 to the present day. The things that are lagging behind, things that are inefficient, things that are um, constrictive because we have emotions and, and, and paradigms and, and ideals that maybe are traditional or are, are motivated by base urges that we don't really want to deal with, but are affecting our lives. And this is the time that we can actually free them, that we need to understand that these are the things that made us hit this brick wall in the past. Uranus calls us to transcend over emotion, to transcend <coughs> over uh, uh, the present day and see it as it should be in the future, as it could be, and find a way, an innovative way, from above to look at things, w w using your intellect and your higher mind. So it's a time to be more in tune with your higher minds than with your guts. Your guts could be a little hungrier and feistier at this time. Friday the 21st, moon in Gemini, and that moon is opposite uh, uh, Jupiter and Mercury that are conjunct on that day exactly. It could be a day with a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, a lot of movement, a lot of navigation, a lot of forward movement in our life whatsoever. It could be a great, great day for business. It could be a good day to sign agreements. It's a good day to start a written project. Anything that is con connected to information is heightened on that day and knowledge and wisdom. But um, it could be too much for us. All this noise all the time, all this information, all this intake of information. So know how to connect to quietness. Know how to connect to nature. Know how to connect to things that are not of the left brain on that day as well. And tune in instead of tuning out all the time. Seek wisdom that comes from inside, not only information that is fed from without. <coughs> says this Mercury, Jupiter. And then on the 22nd, we have our December solstice, Sun moving into Capricorn, we have a full Moon in Cancer on that day, opposing Saturn, which is conjunct the Sun. So, we talked about taking responsibility, we're talking about getting growing up. I don't, I don't want to say getting older, I want to say growing up. And, and maturation is a key word here. If we do not understand that this imperfect, malfunctioning, unresponsible, dirty, immoral universe is where we reside and take the steps necessary to ensure that our endeavors are proven successful in the next stage, then things can become messy throughout the winter. And we don't want that to happen. So, step up, rise up, rise above, take responsibility, understand where your true loyalty lies, your true morals and ethics what are the pillars that erect this personal, wonderful thing you call your life? Of course, when I'm talking about the moon in Cancer, I'm talking about home and home, about the family we came forth from and the family we are here in now, about mothering in general, 
and sustenance and belonging and the feeling of being identified with certain things in our life, feeling empathy with certain subjects in our life, as if they are part of who I am. And they would always be part because I have ingrained them in my emotional pattern, in my emotional construct. The moon is about everything that became subjective from this objective experience we call life. Everything that went through this filter, this personal filter of emotional maturation and digestion has become personal. That's the moon. The moon is opposing Saturn. Grow up, says Saturn. But I want to stay under the covers just a little longer, says the moon in Cancer. It's time, says Saturn. Can't we hug and snuggle just one more minute? <laughs> There's so much to do. There's so much to go. So, so much places to go to and there's so much yet to learn and discover say Jupiter and Mercury standing at the side so I hope this is a time of tuning in not only of tuning out and I hope this is a time of understanding that not every cold breathe can make you flutter and shiver and lose your aim and that in order to reach that target we have to be consistent and responsible and innovative some patterns some things things that are not efficient anymore have to go we have to step up we have to rise up if we want to truly be satisfied and happy in our life. It takes a long time to find that third set of rules because it requires experience. Saturn. Once you do, do you have the courage and the strength and the discipline, Saturn, to follow your own rules. And with that, and with Georgia, I'm going to leave you and wish you all a very pleasant week. I want to thank you for sharing this and commenting and for everything you're doing. Of course, for personal readings and joining our, my astrology groups or my chart analysis group, contact me. May you live long and prosper.